Alrighty, guys, welcome to our first uh, daily webinar of the week. Just want to give you guys some life up updates really quickly before we jump into everything. So, as you guys know, if you've been paying attention, following along with the webinars, uh, just Saturday, so two days ago, I finally moved in and got settled into my new place. I spent the whole weekend just moving everything in, doing some furniture shopping, you know, apartment shopping, all that good stuff. So a couple things about the sound. Um, well, as far as the connection and the sound goes, moving forward for the next year that I am here, you know, obviously things might change if I'm like traveling somewhere and I'm not really sure exactly what the Wi-Fi is going to be like. We should have crystal clear, perfect Wi-Fi on all of the daily webinars and all of the weekly outlooks that I do um, from my place, which I don't, I mean, in the summertime, I might go somewhere nice, uh, but really, I, I, if you guys were on my weekly outlook, you guys uh, heard my expectations and you know I've been traveling for the past year and a half like literally been traveling the world Australia Thailand all over Pacific Asia China um, Central America all over the past year and a half and I'm finally settling down so 2019 is is kind of like the stay in one place and go super hard and grind uh, mode for me and uh, with that also if there's a little bit of an echo at least what I'm hearing is an echo right now because I'm waiting on a bunch of furniture and all my rugs and everything that I ordered to get delivered over the next couple of weeks. So I apologize, my place is a little bit empty right now. So if you hear an echo, that's what that's from. And I'm also gonna be getting a brand new like studio microphone to do these on. So the sound quality, not just the connection, but the sound quality is gonna be A1. So I'm really excited to kind of step everything up and bring you guys some quality stuff. Um, also, I just want to plug in my YouTube very quickly because as 2019 progresses and now that I'm settled in and the course is going to coming to a close this week and it's going to be released on Tuesday, my time is going to be freed up a lot more for me to do extracurricular things like create content for you guys. Um, so make sure you're subscribed to my YouTube channel. It's just Positive Traders. That's also where I do the weekly outlook live every Sunday. So if you're subscribed on there, it's going to be good to have um, the notifications for that as well. Okay, but I'm very excited to be settled in. I'm very excited to. I know we've had some daily webinars where the Wi-Fi hasn't been amazing as I've traveled the past year and a half, and even the weekly outlooks, Wi-Fi is not always amazing. But um, I am paying for like 300 megabits per second, the fastest, best package I can get. So I'm excited to. I don't know that that hypes me out. It's like adult things, right? When you're excited about fast internet and being in a place where you can just like grind but i'm very excited about that stuff so on today's webinar guys obviously normal daily webinar we're gonna go over the calendar we're gonna go over a couple pairs um i also just kind of want to set the tone for you guys uh, that 2019 i'm really moving more towards the bigger long-term trades for those of you guys that have been in positive traders for the past uh, almost three years, uh, May, actually end of May, beginning of June will be three years now that I've been running the group positive traders. Um, and for those of you guys, I know that there's a couple of you guys that are, that are some veterans that have been well, more than a couple of you guys, a couple dozen of you guys um, that are long time veterans literally been here since like the first couple months the inception of this and you guys all know it's been a you know also for me too as i've developed my skill set and as i've become a better trader because this year i'm only five years in right so when i started positive traders i was only two going up going into three years of trading forex and really only two of those years were really taking it seriously my first year in forex I didn't take it seriously. You know, I, it's like, like how most people get brought into it. And I'm sure like you were brought into Forex yourself, right? Like you saw it as, or hopefully you don't see it this way because you, you're learning from a mentor like myself that tells you that it's not really how it is. And um, you see the lifestyle that I have and you see that it's not built on flipping accounts and it's not built on, you know, turning $1,000 to $100,000. Like a lot of people are brought in originally to believe in this, this really misconception. But, you know, um, so as my skill set has grown, my trading style has also changed significantly, right? If I look back three years ago when I first started Positive Traders and how I gave out signals then to how I give signals out now, it's completely, completely different. And 
I just don't, I just really truly don't believe, or at least for me personally, with the lifestyle that I have, the lifestyle that I want, the time freedom that I have and am able to keep from trading, um, I've been able to do it with more and more time away from the charts, but I'm still able to receive, get better results than I was in the past. So just all I'm trying to say, guys, is I'm really trying to set the tone that I'm obviously... 2019 is my grand time. I'm here to stay consistent with these daily webinars, bring as much content. If anything, this is going to be like the biggest year content wise and consistency wise for positive traders. But you're also going to notice this year, there's going to be a, a very significant less amount of trades. Now, I, I mean, I wouldn't say very significant. And I, what I mean is the, the types of trades, guys. I am not no longer interested in and really hopping into a trade with a 10 or 15 pip stop loss that much. Okay. So I don't want you, I don't want you to think that it's completely ruled out. I'd say maybe one or two trades a month are going to be smaller time frame trades where they're what we could consider a scalp or maybe an intraday trade, which it would be classified as a little bit longer term than a scalp. Usually like a true scalp, you're usually in the markets for maybe like 30 minutes or an hour. Now, everybody's definition is going to differ, but in my opinion, that's what a scalp is. Very rare going to see any of those, but as far as intraday trades go and intraweek trades, we might have, you know, between two and four intraday or intraweek trades every single uh, month. For those of you guys hopping on right now on the live, very important that you restart on the replay. I've been setting expectations and giving you guys a little bit of updates in my own life. Um, so if you care to hear that, which it does definitely involve you guys, watch that, um, rewatch the, re the couple first minutes of the replay. But um, getting just getting back to what I was saying, I'm setting a very strong expectation right now that a majority of the trades that we place throughout 2019 are going to be based on the one day, the one week, and the one month. And we're going to have an occasional few trades each month that are based on the 30 minute, the one hour, the four hour, you know, in the four hour, one hour, 30 minute and lower time frames. Okay. So it's just, it's just really also from my perspective, understanding, having a better understanding of Forex. I want to pull something up guys that Louis shared with me today. Um, just before we get into things and just kind of, kind of let something sink in. I'm thinking about making like a funny meme or something out of this. Maybe not like a meme, but just like, like making a, making a funny post about this because it, it really just goes to the perception of things. I want you guys to look at this picture. This is not a joke. This is, this is real guys right here. The world's biggest hedge fund returned 14.6% last year. We did 6% just in the month of December. So I know I've said this and I'll say this again, but for those of you guys that are here and you roll your eyes, because I know there's, there's going to be some of you guys out there. I know that there's a lot of you guys that are in the same boat, but I have to say this. Those of you guys that roll your eyes when you hear me say that there's not going to be a lot of trades or that the returns are going to be, you know, I'm aiming for 3% a month or I'm aiming for 42, 40 for at least 40% by the end of the year. If you miss my weekly outlook, watch my weekly outlook. I, I was talking a lot about my expectations and what I wanna do in 2019. But just really let this sink in, guys. The world's biggest hedge fund returned 14.6% last year, okay? Now, I know that there's a very uh, common argument that people will say, and they'll say, well, a hedge fund is billions of dollars, so that 14% is a ton of money. You're absolutely right. It is a lot of money, and the people in these hedge funds have a lot of money. But what you have to understand is that if you don't have a lot of money, that doesn't mean that you change your rate of return or that you change your ROI goal. It means that you, that you understand and educate yourself on the power of compounding and how, yeah, you may not have a lot of money right now, but if you compound your money over time, you'll have a lot of money. One thing I, I actually saw the other day too, let me switch back to the screen very quickly. I'll, I'll keep this up for a, for a moment actually. Uh, for those of you guys that I've heard of Ed Milet, he's another, he's like a very like motivational, but he's not like motivational. He's like, he actually does real stuff. He makes a lot of money with his companies that he owns. But 
I was on, if you guys go to Ed Mila, it's, if you've never heard of Ed Mila, it's just E-D, that's his first name, Ed, and then his last name is Mila, M-Y-L-E-T-T, I believe, and that's his Instagram name, at Ed Mila. If you go and look, he might have posted something new, but it's one of his most recent video posts that he put on his page, on his actual posts, and he talks about time and how people say like, okay, you do, like you don't have a lot of time and how he, he said that he made a million dollars when he was 20 years old, et cetera, in his twenties. And then I think he said by like his late twenties, he was making like uh, eight figures or so, something like that. But the, the whole point of what he was saying is that, you know, you don't want to get complacent with time. And that's very true. I don't want you guys to necessarily just take what, like I want you guys to, to take what I say with a grain of salt, that you have to understand the power of compounding. But if you have a thousand dollars in your account right now, or even less than that, or maybe a little bit more than that, a couple thousand dollars, like, and I'm, I'm not saying this to you personally, I'm saying this in terms of the market, that is chump change, okay? I still think $1,000 is a lot. $2,000 is still a lot of money to me. I'm not, I'm, I'm not comfortable necessarily just dropping $2,000 at a store like it's nothing. I'm still gonna like think about that purchase. So I'm not trying to like down talk to any of you guys. Please do not take it in that way. All I'm trying to say is that in the market terms, in for, the Forex market that moves trillions of dollars a day, that's chump change, okay? And what you have to understand is don't get complacent with the power of compounding to the fact that you're like, okay, well, this $2,000 account over the next 10 years at you know 40% a year, that'll give me some really nice returns. I wouldn't just look at that and get comfortable at that. I would be doing other things in your life, whether that is, I mean, there's so many things that you can do. I'm obviously not here on this webinar. I'm here to get to the charts in just a minute, but I'm also here to just like keep things real with you guys that, you know, don't get complacent with, with just the, the compounding one account. And I don't mean to have a bunch of accounts, but I mean to like work for other things, guys. Like, and I'm not saying that you have to do something other than Forex. Like maybe your goal is to master the skill set so that you can start building a clientele. And maybe some of you guys are, have that argument of like, oh, well, David, you have 30,000 followers on Instagram and you have a big following that get, you get hundreds of likes on your posts on Facebook. Like, it's easy for you. Guys, if you had known me or even if you've been in this group for two, for two and a half years and you saw me, I literally, all, I'm going to actually post like, a, like a, a story or something at some point where I've actually taken screenshots of how my Instagram account has grown. Like, guys, I had 1,000 followers three years ago. Like on, on, like most people on Instagram have like between zero, between like a hundred and a thousand followers. That's like average. Right. And I had, I would get maybe like 10 likes on my Facebook posts. I was average guys. Like it's, I didn't have anything special. I just was consistent with posting. I didn't do anything special. I was just, I just wanted it bad enough and did it. So for those of you guys that might be thinking like, Oh, I want to learn and master the skill set so that I can leverage my account and or my skills to build clients like I have and be able to work for a firm and do this, that, and the other Forex related and leverage your skill set. You don't need to have a big following right off the bat. Um, it's crazy when I see some people's goals for 2019 is to like have 50,000 followers by the end of the year. Like that's a terrible goal. You, you, that's like just you asking for validation you need other people to like validate your life to be happy. Like focus on what you're doing, focus on the value that you bring and focus on the content that you can provide and let the followers come in, guys. Like I know people, I know people with 5,000 followers on Instagram and they're getting 4,500 of those people or almost like 90% of those people that are following them watching their Instagram stories and I know people with 100,000 followers that are getting 2,000 people watching their Instagram stories because it's all about, it doesn't like matter the quantity, guys. It's the quality at the end of the day. So if you're worried about like building a following so that you can gain clients or this or that, like don't worry about that. Like start to stay consistent. Know that it's not going to happen overnight. Know that it's going to take a long time and just focus more on what you can do. Um, you know, I started... Um, and I'm very transparent with you guys. I literally started um, in, in gained my following by going on Instagram and going on Facebook 
and doing uh, the free telegram, the free public telegram that to this day has 1,500 members in it and has always been free. That's something I started and that was free. And then through there, I was able to build value and show people that I knew what I was talking about and this and that and be able to build a business out of it and show credibility. And then with that, you, it's just kind of, and you'll notice when you start to build a, a, a social media following that it just kind of becomes exponential and is like the snowball effect. So not to get too much on like the marketing or like social media side, I'm, the whole point, remember, just tying it back into what I said is don't get complacent with the compounding effect. You should have other things that you're doing in your life, especially because once you understand and learn the skill of Forex and become consistent and proficient, you don't, you don't need to spend 12 hours in front, of a, in front of a computer. I can literally get the same results spending 12 hours a week in front of the computer as somebody that is spending 12 hours a day in front of the computer because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. It's, it doesn't, if, if you have it in your head that you need to take more, tr more trades equals more profit, that is completely wrong, guys. It's actually proven, and I'm going to share this with you guys as we collect more data and it's shown, um, but it's, it's actually proven. And I'm not, just, I'm not just talking out of my butt, guys. I will show you guys data. Um, I still have to, we still have to comp compile the data so that way I can send it to you guys. But and, and, and explain it in an easy to understand format, but it literally proves that less trades equals higher profitability in a higher win rate, win rate long term. So that's something to say, but, and it doesn't just have to be Forex guys. Like, you know, whether you're, if you're at your nine to five, you know, you could take the money that you have from your nine to five. Like I literally know people that are making $50,000 a year, $40,000 a year. They can just average money, and they're still able to create a six figure income outside of work because they act like they're broke. They don't get their paycheck. They don't get their $500 paycheck on a Friday, pay their $200 or $300 in bills and go out, go out Friday night and spend that $200 at the club or go and buy a freaking ounce of weed with that extra $200 or whatever they are investing that money. They're acting like they're broke. They're doing the right things and they are managing their money correctly. So it doesn't matter if you're making $30,000 a year or if you're listening to this and making $150,000 a year. There is zero excuses as to why any of you guys listen to this right now can't become a multimillionaire in any line of business, especially, especially Forex. It's all about your mindset, okay? And I know people that are in the drop shipping industry making multiple five figures, high five figures, even multiple six figures a month off of drop shipping. Now, granted, that's not always all profit. I know with drop shipping and e-commerce, there's revenue and FBA and all that stuff. There's revenue and then there's profits and there's your profit margins and there's all that stuff. But I could, we could say that for anything, real estate. I know people that get in the best shape of their life and then start doing fitness like there's so many things that you can do. Like you have to expand your mind and just be in a mindset. Okay. So I didn't really want to like diverge too much. I kind of realized I just spent 20 minutes talking about this stuff, but guys, like, I mean, this is good stuff. This is what a mentor is here for. This is a mentorship, right? You guys are here to be mentored on a daily basis. It's going to get extremely boring. And we've noticed that in the past, what happened last year, you know, there were a couple, definitely a couple months last year that were extremely dry because all there is, is we just hop on the charts and we just talk about the charts for 20 minutes or 30 minutes or an hour. And there's no motivation. There's no mindset talk. There's no being real. So my goal, it, I mean, if you listen to the tone and, and what I'm saying in these webinars versus literally a webinar 12 months ago, it's completely shifted to being, I want to be more of a mentor to you guys in the sense of all areas of your life, not just trading, because it doesn't matter if you have all the right information. If your mindset is not right, you will never be successful. Straight up, guys. If you, I mean, I'm not even going to say examples right now. You already know it. Okay. You know it deep down what's the right, the right mindset is and what the wrong mindset is. Okay. So you need to get in that right mindset. You need to get in gear. And if you don't like what I'm saying, it's because your ego is too big and doesn't want to be real with yourself and wants to like, you want to live in this fake world where you don't, you know, don't aren't doing the right things. And you know, you're deep down, you're not doing the right things, but it's more comfortable for you or it's easier for you. You will never grow 
if you aren't comfortable. I was actually, um, my girlfriend was actually, was, we were watching Blue Planet last night, which is like this like planet Earth. You guys have probably like heard of it. It's just like nature and stuff like that. And we were watching the deep sea one and it talks about the, um, the crabs and these things called spider crabs. Now I've, I've heard about this before. Like I've heard the, the classic cliche saying, but it was crazy actually seeing it last night. And these, these spider crabs that travel in like these, you should look them up. They're actually pretty interesting, but the spider crabs and they tra they travel in like thousands, like together, like on the floor of the bed of the sea. But the whole point of it is they, they all get into this giant mound, right? They all like get into this big mound and they all like are climbing on top of each other. And this giant mound can be like a mile wide. And it's these cra this crazy, like uh, just army of, of crabs. And while they're in this mound, what they're doing is they're going there to grow. And the only way, I don't know if this is with all crabs or just the spider crab. I'm pretty sure, I don't know if all crabs break out of their shell or not, but for this crab to grow, the spider crab, they literally have to break out of their shell, kind of like shedding like a snake sheds. So that's kind of metaphorical to what you need to do to grow inside, is for you to be able to grow, you need to break out of that shell of yours and you need to become comfortable, okay? And you need to, I'm sorry, you need to become uncomfortable. You need to get out of your comfort zone. You need to do things, you know, literally guys, I've been reading this book. I talked about it on the weekly outlook yesterday. I highly recommend it to you guys. Um, it is called the mastery of self and it is the follow-up book to the four agreements, which is another great book, both by a gentleman named Don Miguel Ruiz Jr. Um, I was in the Amazon bookstore the other day. They actually, have, I didn't know Amazon made bookstores, but it's like a Barnes and Noble, but like an Amazon one. And I found this book in here in the self, the self improvement section. And it is amazing. I am not going to spoil it. Like literally read the, the preface. I mean, I would just sit here and read the preface to you guys, but I think I've spent enough of your guys' time going in order. It's only like a page and a half. Maybe I'll read it tomorrow for you guys, but it is amazing. You know, I'm getting goosebumps even thinking about it. Like I, I really want to read it right now. If you guys want me to read it, let me know in the chat. Maybe I'll read it at the end of this or I'll read it maybe at the end of this. And then also at the beginning of the next one, the preface, it'll, it'll literally only take me a couple minutes to read, but it is an amazing book. I highly recommend it to you guys. And it's called again, the mastery of self by Don Miguel Ruiz Jr. And he is amazing. Um, the book is amazing. It's, I mean, I, there's so many good books that I've read. Think and Grow Rich, um, the, the 48 Laws of Power, um, uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, um, The Four Agreements, now this book. It's so amazing. All right, Andrew says read it. Okay, I'll read it at the end, guys. If you want me to, if you want me to read the preface for you guys, I'll read it at the end for you. And it's like it's some stuff that will give you some goosebumps. Um, but let's get into the good stuff. I'm sorry for, for going in 25 minutes without even jumping into the charts. But like I said, I want to be a mentor to you guys. So if you don't have anybody in your life that, that talks to you like this and you know deep down that you need this kind of talking to, that's what these daily webinars are for. And this is how, you know, I'm probably not obviously every day I'm going to spend 25 minutes going over motivational stuff, but you guys get the gist of what I'm trying to say. All right. So let's jump into the charts. Let's go over what we're looking at for the week. And it begins with the economic calendar and a couple things just to, to touch on. I touched on all of them on the weekly outlook. So if you didn't watch the weekly outlook, go and watch it. I went over everything this week, but to go over the next 24 hours, all we have is the trade balance for the Canadian dollar at 8.30 a.m. Eastern time. So it's 6.30 a.m. where I am. I'm Mountain Standard Time in Arizona. So I am two hours behind Eastern time. So at 8.30 a.m. Eastern time, we're going to see the trade balance for the Canadian dollar come out. Um, I'm not too interested in trading CAD right now. Um, I know I mentioned on the weekly outlook that I am still could see downside on USD CAD. And we looked at a new pair CAD yen for some potential upside. But for right now, a majority of the markets, I'm on the sidelines and only really interested in the pair that we're in. So let's take a look very quickly and start it off with the pair that we're in. Okay, so we are in... GBP NZD, we placed a buy on this trade a couple minutes before the weekly outlook yesterday. So at market open, 
We have a 200 pip stop loss. We have a 425 pip take profit. So this is technically considered a swing trade. And um, it, we have a risk to reward ratio of 2.12. And the recommended risk that I gave you guys was to risk 2%. So what you should profit is maximum we're gonna lose if it hits our stop loss, even though the stop loss is 200 pips. If it hits our stop loss, we're gonna lose 2% of our account. Meaning if you have a $1,000 account, you're gonna lose a whole whopping $20, that's it. If you have a $1,000 account on a 200 pip stop loss, right? That's another thing, um, I know I've gone over this before, just another recap that like, just because you have a 200 pip stop loss doesn't mean you're losing a ton of money, right? It's all about using the position size calculator to know the, the correct lot size to use, which that I've gone over literally hundreds of times. Um, but because we have a risk to reward of 2.12 and a risking 2%, we are risking 2% to make 4.24%. We're looking to make like double that risk to reward ratio in a percentage, right? You take whatever percentage you're risking and multiply that by your risk to reward ratio. So 2.12 for a total of 4.24% is what we're looking to make. So that would be very nice. That's That would be a nice 4% to lock in. If we lose 2%, well, we lose 2%. It's not the end of the day and we move on to another trade. Um, now that doesn't necessarily mean we aren't gonna take another trade while this trade is open. You guys know we've had multiple trades running in the past, that's a very common thing. So, but just as of this time, we only have one trade that we are in, okay? So I told you guys on the, on the last update in the student chat that today I would go over the analysis because I, I don't think I can justify giving a one or two sentence analysis on a pair that we haven't really looked at. And first and foremost, I do wanna give a big shout out to Louie. Um, me and Louie, every single Sunday, we get on a uh, call a couple hours before I do my weekly outlook and he does his outlooks and all that stuff. And we just kind of share ideas of what we're looking at and go over the fundamentals. And one thing, just to kind of shout Louie out very quickly, um, Louie and I are both completely different style. I mean, we both do swing trading, but as far as like the way we do our analysis, it's mine is a little bit more technical based and a little bit more of a simple strategy. One, and one thing that I really appreciate about Louie is not only are we uh, best friends or where he's one of my best friends that uh, if not my best friend that we, that I really appreciate that he has a different style. So it's able to give us insight. And I, I, this is something I've mentioned on past webinars also that it's very important that um, when you're in trading, it's good to have support from other people. Okay. So I'm not going to get all deep into that right now, but it's good to find somebody that's real. You know, and I talked about that in the past, like don't find your friend, that's like just trying to flip an account to make money real quick. Like that's not a good support system. I'm talking about somebody that's in that same long-term compounding, understands that when you tell them, all right, bro, we're going to look or guy or girl, whatever, that we're going to make 3% this month or we're looking to make 3% that they see it as, wow, let's do that. That's, that's a hard goal to stay consistent with or that's a good goal. Not somebody that looks at that 3% and is like, wow, bro, come join my company where we can make 100% by tomorrow. Like you're, you're not gonna have long-term results and longevity with that person. So find somebody good. Anyways, just of being good friends with Louie is that he is actually a finance major. Um, he's actually graduating in the spring with a bachelor's degree or a four-year degree, depending on what country you're in, um, with a degree in finance or economics. Uh, I think, not actually finance, economics. I know they're very similar to economics. And what that means is, is Louis has a very good understanding and he learns things in school, which is, I'm kind of jealous about. I wish I, I went to school with and had a four-year degree as well in economics because I'd probably learn some of the things that he's learning um, about understanding like the fundamentals and how central banks work and, and all like, you know, some deeper elements to why the markets move. And one thing that I'm just going to touch on in the way this ties into this trade in particular is bond yields. Um, I've been had the pleasure of having Louie as a resource to learn about bond yields recently and understanding how big of an impact bond yields have to do with um, trading. Now, this, web, this, this daily webinar has already been 30 minutes. I could literally probably spend an entire hour or so talking about bond yields. So that's not for the, I'm not going to go deep into bond yields, but in short, um, if you guys have ever heard of like a bond, if you don't know what a bond is, you can Google it, but it's pretty much where you are lending the government money. So where the government is saying, you know, and there, there's all types of bonds guys. There's, you know, there's, there's, I mean, 
there's literally probably dozens, if not hundreds of types of different bonds that you can buy, okay? And basically the bond is saying, in, in simple terms, it's saying, you give us money now, and you know you lend us your money now, and we're gonna give you a certificate that says on this date, you know whether it's five years, ten years, fifteen years, twenty years, whatever, you're gonna we're gonna give you this much back. Okay, it's basically like an IOU from the government or whatever corporation or wherever you're getting the bond from that says give us money now and we'll give you more of this back later. Okay. And that percentage that they give back is different depending on what kind of bond and where it comes from. Okay. But in short, I don't want to like overwhelm you guys too much because even that might've been overwhelming for some of you. Um, bond yields generally speaking. And I mean, this is, this, this should make sense that if the bond yield, which means the percentage that they are going to give you back on your bond is higher from a government bond. If that bond yield is higher then there, it's usually riskier to hold the or to buy that bond, which in turn, which means essentially means to hold that currency. Okay, so understand that, and vice versa. If a bond yield is low, that it means that it's safer to hold or to buy a bond, which you can only buy a bond. Let's say you want to buy a bond from the Federal Reserve to buy a Federal Reserve bond. Well, you're going to have to buy that bond with U.S. dollars. So you're, it basically translates into that currency is safer to hold longer term. Okay, so in short, if you're writing it down, if bond yields go up or if bond yields, I guess the higher the bond yields, the riskier to hold or to buy bonds and the lower the bond yield, the safer it is, okay? And if you guys look at bond yields, which you can actually put on here, which is really cool, I, I actually learned something today too, uh, you can go on here and you can add symbol and you can actually compare charts, you can lay over charts. So we're gonna put in 10 year UK bonds. Okay, so this is 10 year bonds and what we're gonna do is we're gonna switch this to a line chart. So this is a little bit easier to see. And I'm just going to make the line just a little bit thinner, okay? Now, is there anything, hopefully there's something that you guys notice right off the bat between the correlation with 10-year, uh, and this is UK, so this is GBP bonds. This is what we're looking at. We're looking at the base currency, right? This is the pound versus the New Zealand dollar. So this is GBP, so this is 10-year, I mean, you guys see it, right? 10 UK 10 year bonds. Okay, UK 10 year B. Okay, UK 10 year bonds. Now, is there anything that you guys notice? What exactly? Exactly, Adam, you said it. Mirror images. Okay, so they, they have a negative correlation to each other. So we've seen, in, in, let's see if this makes sense, right? This means as bond yields go down, right? Let's say back in October of last year, when bond yields were down, we said it's safer for that currency, so it's more attractive for investors to hold. So what do we see? We see GBP NZD rise because, or we, we saw it rise because the, the bond yield was lower. And then what do we see? We start to see a, uh, we start to see where they meet, Okay, and it kind of gets to this middle point, and then they push away from each other again. As bond yields rise, the pound got weaker. Okay, now if now this is where what I do comes into play, right? And this is why I love Louis because he's going, he's getting, he's he's really enlightening me on the fundamental side, and especially the past. Oh, let me let me just hold on. Let me press the switch, guys. Okay, just needed to. Make sure my laptop was charging. Had to run across the room for a second. Um, and what do we notice right here from a technical standpoint, which is what I really like, and I'm, I'm, I'm definitely starting to learn the bigger impact of fundamentals and these hidden things, quote unquote hidden things. And guys, this stuff right here, like I, I hope some of you guys watching this right now are like having your, your mind blown because – like this isn't stuff that your normal forex guru is gonna go over with, are gonna go over with you. Okay, so 
very important to take notes and pay attention to this stuff. But we can see from a technical standpoint, the, uh, the bond yield made a bit of a double top in this area, and it's definitely showing signs of weakening, right? If we look at this uptrend that we were in of these bond yields from a technical standpoint, we're, we've now made a lower high and we're trending lower. So what does this mean? This means that as these bond yields continue to drop, we should see it would only make sense for GBP NZD to go back up higher as the yields decrease and we see uh, uh, the pound becoming more attractive to buy, okay? So that is the fundamental backing and with swing trades, it's very important to have some type of fundamental backing um, when you enter a swing trade, okay? So that is that. Now, from a technical standpoint, okay, there's a lot of things to look at here. We can look at the daily and we can say, okay, simply there's a nice bull flag going on here. So that is a lot of confluence for mo price moving up higher. Um, and another technical thing is we have this little bit of an inverted head and shoulders going on right here. So if we look at this on, it looks a little bit better on the daily so you guys can see it, but we definitely have a bit of an inverted head and shoulders. There's our left shoulder, there's our head, and there's our right shoulder. So obviously this formation has not technically been completed yet for this to be a tradable head and shoulder for this to like, for us to like officially add the head and shoulder um, uh, conviction or added that, I'm sorry, the head and shoulder um, indicator or whatever you want to call it to the conviction of the upside. We would technically need this, uh, our neckline of this to break, but we are seeing some very nice upside on this pair. Um, or I'm, yeah, we're starting to see some very nice upside on this pair, and I would ex ex imagine it to continue. So we talked about why we're entering it. We have the fundamental backing. We have the technical backing. Um, now, as far as stop loss goes, I chose my stop loss to be below last week and the week before last lows, okay? So we can mark off right here, and right around there is where last week in the week, because it's the weekly chart. This is where last week and the week before last um, uh, lows are. So I'm choosing to set my stop loss a little bit below this, where for me, in my opinion, if we break last week and the week before last lows, uh, this pair or this trade, at least in my opinion, would be invalidated. We would probably continue to see some more downside for a little bit. Um, so that's why I put my stop loss there. Um, and then my take profit is around the 50%. It's a little bit higher than the 50%, but it, this is still all a zone, um, is around the 50% retracement level, which I think we would go much further than the 50% retracement level, but we're still right around there. Like we're within 40, 50 pips. This is a long-term trade, by the way. So right around 50, within 50 pips of our 50% retracement level, okay? So hopefully you're paying attention. If you weren't, that's, the, that's why these are recorded. Um, if I talk too fast, went over something too fast, that's why these are recorded. Um, having a better understanding of bond yields is probably also something that is going to get added to the course. So it's going to be extended by um, a lesson. Um, yeah, so that's that. Now, um, today is not the day that I'm going to go over everything with Euro, USD, and the dollar index. But Here's a bit of a surprise, and this is why it is so important that you guys are staying up to date with these webinars. I'm expecting, I'm now expecting this year at some point, Euro USD to move down very, very, very low. Okay? Now, my original bias of, watch, let's, let's go, okay. Sorry, I'm getting tongue-tied because for those... I, I, I never know where all of you guys are at mentally as far as paying attention and knowing where everything is at, okay? Because for most of you guys that are paying attention and quick with it and understanding everything, you're probably like, wait a second. You've just been, just, you've just been talking, even on the weekly all of yesterday, David, you're talking about your bias of the dollar index weakening, which in turn would be Euro USD strengthening. And now you're just now here on Monday, the next day, saying 
you think your USD is going to go really low, which means the dollar, the dollar index has to go up if Euro USD goes down. Okay. Why is that? Because keep in mind guys, the dollar index, this that we're looking at, this chart technically doesn't exist, right? This is an index. This is a weighted chart based on other currencies. Okay. 57% being the Euro. Okay. So this, this isn't like technically a real thing, if that makes sense. You can't really like, I mean, your broker allows you to buy CFD positions on the dollar index or some of them do. I know my broker does FX choice, but you, when you don't aren't actually like, you don't get the dollar index. It's not, I, if for those of you guys that have been in the market for a while, you, you'll, you'll know what I'm, you know what I'm saying when I say the dollar index isn't actually real. It's, a made up thing. I mean, it's, it's based off of data, but it's not a real, like it's not based on an off of a central bank or backed by dollars or fiat currency or anything like that. It's just there. It's a weight. It's a weighted index. It's an index. That's how all indexes are. All indexes, like, like for example, if I, if I told you like the, the Dow Jones or the S and P 500, these aren't real. They're based on, Oh, it's a weighted index. See, what is the Dow Jones? Dow Jones Industrial Average Index, okay? S&P 500 Index. Every index, it's not real. It's not like something like, you can talk about, yeah, buying the S&P 500, but what are you really doing? You're just buying the weight against that weight in percentages with the top 500 performing companies or the Dow Jones, which is the top 50, okay? I'm sorry, Dow Jones is top 30. I'm sorry, not 50, 30. Um, so, so I know I'm going in a lot of places. For some of you guys, you probably were not prepared for such a valuable, informative webinar. Um, I mean, it is what it is. I think it's better than not, not being valuable, okay? But there's the dollar index in Euro USD. So I'm in, I'll, I'll probably do an entire webinar on it dedicated to just the Euro. But let me just put it this way. In short, the European Central Bank, okay? The European, I, I, I wish there was an easy way to explain all of this to you guys. Um, and, and I'll find an easy way to explain it to you guys. But basically, let's just, let me just kind of like start over for a second. The dollar index is, or I'm sorry, the US dollar is controlled by one, one central bank, which is the Federal Reserve. They're responsible for one economy, which is the United States. Okay, one central bank, one country, okay? European Central Bank is one currency for 30 different countries, okay? So basically, those of you guys that live in the US, those of you guys that are my age, 25, or maybe around my age, because uh, if you're a little bit younger than me, you might not have been paying attention when this was going on. But back in 2008, and even if you don't live in the US, if you've been in the investing world, or maybe you're brand new to investing and you don't live in the US, so you have no idea what I'm talking about. So I'm going to just tell you all right now. In 2008, the US entered a recession because the housing market, the real estate market collapsed. Okay. And that's, and I'm sure, I'm sure most of you guys heard about it. You know what I'm probably talking about. Okay. And a lot of people were affected by it. And in short, the reason this happened, the reason the market, the housing market crashed was because the government, the US government, not the US government, the Federal Reserve, central banks were allowing retail banks, basically people were getting loans for bigger and more expensive houses than they should have been. They were getting loans based on better credit than they actually had. Meaning, you wanted to buy a house, you had not the most amazing credit or not the not even necessarily bad credit, but you didn't have the income to support, let's say a big house, and you were only supposed to get approved for let's say a $150,000 house, but the bank approved you for a $300,000 house. So they gave you double what they should have given you just because the banks wanted high interest rate. They wanted to make the money on the interest. Eventually, 
people start to default on their loans because if you get a loan for a three hundred thousand dollar house, if you, I mean it's simple, like think about it, just simple psychological guys. If you get a loan for something that you can't afford, you aren't going to be able to pay it back, right? You aren't going to be able to pay that loan back. So what happens? Everybody starts to default on their loans. The government starts to see what happens. The banks all start to get screwed. Some of the biggest hedge funds and in real estate markets in the world and real estate companies in the world lost their licenses and went bankrupt and everybody started to lose their house. Everybody starts to foreclose and, and everything, all this bad stuff happens. And that is the U S went into a recession and that lasted for a very long period of time. And it wasn't until just a couple of years ago that we officially were, were considered technically out of our recession. And that is that. Okay. So understand the main principle of what I just said in those past couple of minutes that people were getting loans that they weren't qualified for. Okay. The same thing is happening in Europe right now, but on a much larger scale on a bank government scale, because there's 30 countries under the European central bank. And because they're all grouped into the European central bank, they're all being given the same, let's say credit score, quote unquote credit score. But all not all 30, you, you would have to be crazy to think that all 30 countries, that all their governments are the same and all of them manage their money the same. But the central bank, the European central bank is acting like they are. So they're all getting the same amount of money and they're all getting similar things. But a bunch of those countries aren't managing their money as, as good as a few of the countries are. So what we're going to see probably starting this year is a lot of these countries begin to default on their loans. These countries that have to pay back the central bank, the European central bank are going to start losing that. Uh, they're going to start defaulting on those payments and what's going to happen. The Euro, the Euro is going to crash essentially. Okay. And what does that mean for the dollar index? It means the dollar index is going to skyrocket. Now that doesn't necessarily mean the U S economy itself is going to skyrocket. Let me be very clear about that because again, going back to an index, just because this is the strength of the, the U S dollar doesn't doesn't mean that this is the strength of the U S economy. Okay. But because the Euro makes up 57% of weight of this index, if Euro USD moves down, dollar index moves down as well. Let me just pull up something very quickly. Let me just compare this. Let me go to compare. Oh, right. Is DAX on there? No, let's see. No, let's go. Let's go. Uh, I'm sorry. DXY. Okay. Let's get DXY and let's go to a line chart. I'm so glad I can show you guys this because I haven't been able to like, I always switch between the two charts. Like, look at this guys. Look, let's go to a monthly chart. Do you guys notice something about the, about these two lines? What is it? What, what is it? It's the exact opposite, exact to a T exact opposite charts. So this blue, these blue lines is the dollar index. And this is the correlation to Euro USD. So if Euro USD falls really hard, that means the dollar index is going to skyrocket. Okay. So, um, yeah, exactly. Adam, Adam says, good Lord, this is golden info subprime mortgage crisis crisis times 100. Absolute freaking lutely. Now keep in mind that this is, of course, this is largely speculative but based on data, GDP, CPI, PPI, PMI, all the stuff that we see in the, and all the underlying data, year over year GDP, things like that, it's pointing to this, okay? So that is why in a nutshell, my Euro USD bias in short is going to be changing to short at some point now. Let me be very clear and just retract something very quickly. Now, this does not mean just because I told you this and I have a lot of conviction in my voice and you guys hear this, it does not mean if you do this, you deserve to lose all your money. I'm sorry. Some of you guys probably would disagree if I, if I say something like that, but I'm sorry, you deserve to lose your money if you do this. 
do not go on to Euro USD. Go load an account with a couple thousand dollars or whatever, over leverage your account and just short Euro USD and be like David said, it's going to drop hundreds of thousands of pips this year. And I'm just going to solve all my problems and be, be a millionaire come December. You deserve to lose your money if you do that straight up. Okay. Because the markets now, this is because a, this is extremely speculative and that's enough right there. That's enough right there. Okay. There is some things that support this from a technical standpoint, right? We have this ginormous head and shoulders that we've been working with since middle of last year, literally middle of last year. But it does not, just because all of this is going on, it's going to take time. This isn't something that we're going to see happen next week. I mean, it, I mean, it could, right? I mean, it, it very well, I mean, who knows? We never know what the world is going to bring us on a day-to-day, week-to-week basis. You never know. But most likely, this is going to take time to unravel, okay? There's a very good chance that our outlook of the dollar index falling lower still and Euro USD moving up higher before making that big drop. Because it, it, that, that's the thing that I, can't, that I want to have some very good conviction with is that I believe it will drop at some point. But is it going to happen right away? Maybe not, okay? So don't go short and over leverage a position on Euro USD just because you guys hear this conviction, just because everything you hear me say made sense. It's still highly speculative, okay? Understand that. So that's dollar index, that's Euro USD. Um, pound USD, I'm bullish on the pound. We just went over bond yields on the pound and, and up, I mean, boom, enough said right there. Um, AUD USD. Not super interested in AUD USD right now. Um, I do something I talked about on yesterday's weekly outlook is the big, if we zoom out a little bit, that big exhaustion candle breaking the 2016, 2015 lows, making a big double bottom. Um, I'm not entirely convinced yet. That's obviously why we haven't taken a trade and why I'm on the sidelines of AUD USD. USD CAD is kind of falling without us. Um, it, I mean, it's, it's just taken off, guys. It's just tanked. I definitely do regret not taking a sell at the top here. I think it would have been, and you know, hindsight is always 2020, you know, so if you're going to call somebody out and say, well, we should have, could have, would have, well, why didn't you take the trade either? Right. If you knew it was going to happen and you're so great of a trader, why are you even following me in the first place? Right. So there's always going to be regrets. There's always going to be could have, should have, would have times. To be, be a professional trader, you need to keep your emotions in check, okay? You need to make sure that when you're, you see these situations, you don't let it emotionally affect you, okay? Um, I definitely see a missed opportunity, but there's also argument to that, and I talked about that on Friday's webinar, and I also talked about that on yesterday's weekly outlook, that I don't consider it a missed opportunity because there was the flash crash and the markets were so crazy and literally anything could have happened. But it wouldn't have been terrible to set a stop loss. Is there two? There is two. Hold on, guys. It wouldn't have been terrible to. Oh, that's what that's for. It wouldn't have been terrible to take a short at the top with a very small stop loss and you know a nice long take profit. That's that. That's kind of the trades where you get that really good risk to reward ratio, like that eight risk reward ratio, where you're risking two percent to make sixteen percent or whatever. But um, yeah, kind of a bit of a missed opportunity. I would still expect it to go lower though this week. I would still expect USD cat to go lower. Um, USD Singapore dollar, um, definitely watching to see what USD Singapore dollar does. If it goes lower, um, we're probably actually going to like maybe trade it going lower, but if anything, when it gets down to this area, this blue zone, we'll be looking for buys, um, based on the long-term dollar strength that we'll be looking for. Um, CAD yen, oh man, CAD yen is just taken off. I've been watching CAD yen. I'm hesitant about just jumping into day trades on CAD yen, but I talked about this on the weekly outlook. I said CAD yen should probably continue to see some upside this week, and it's gone up about almost 100 pips since yesterday's webinar. Um, so, you know, there's some, I mean, I see some potential opportunity where we could have maybe bought in this area, really tight stop loss, you know, like a 20, 30 pip stop loss 
and uh, where is it now? Like like 80 pips higher. You know, some some potential missed opportunity in there. But again, like guys, I'm in no rush. I am chilling. Like if you aren't happy with with the way I do my trading, like guys, what I do is so undervalued every day. Doing getting on 52 weeks a year, four times a week. That's over 200 live webinars that I take time out of my day aside from giving out signals, aside from trading the trade copier, aside from releasing a free course for you guys. I mean, guys, I'm not going to be in front of the charts every single day of my life staring at the charts for 12 hours a day. If I miss something, I miss something. There's always going to be missed opportunities. And I care more about my health and my mindset and my making sure that like my own, like I've been the past 72 hours, I've been getting comfortable moving in, taking my time, getting comfortable and getting set up. So Sorry if that sounds selfish, but I think uh, what a lot of stuff that I do is extremely selfless. Um, and then we went over GBP, MZD, okay? So that this is the juice right here, guys. Um, does the speculate, Adam asks, does the speculation on the potential crash of the euro alter your long-term bias on gold? Absolutely. Um, now, gold is a commodity. So it's like oil. There's a lot more that goes into gold than I th than you think, but I actually so uh, Adam, I guess not to say absolutely, I I am long term bullish on gold as well. Okay, just to kind of put it simply, um, so I said that on the weekly outlook for those of you guys like you guys should seriously you hear that? That's a pen against a piece of paper, guys. Okay, here this is. A, I don't know if you guys can hear it, but me flicking through some paper. I literally have one notebook, two notebooks, three notebooks, all beside me right now, getting all of this stuff for you guys, okay? Um, and, like, it's, you, it's important that you guys take notes, that you pay attention, that you write this stuff down. There's no way you guys are going to remember this stuff. If you don't write it down, you have too much going on in your life, too many things to focus on. So you need to write this stuff down so it can re-spark your memory. Okay. But Adam, to answer your question, um, it could alter it, but for right now I am expecting, um, gold to continue moving higher. I think gold will have no problem breaking the 1400s, 1500s this year. And we're going to see gold, um, extend much higher over time. Short term, could we see some downside on gold? Um, absolutely. But uh, even though I would be bearish on Euro USD long term, we don't always see a positive correlation. Like, watch, let, let's just do this for a second. Let's put on Euro USD and let's go to compare and let's put on gold, and you'll see that they don't always have a, like, I mean, here's a perfect example. Look at the charts right now. So this red and green line chart is gold. So what's happening right now? Yes, we did see as Euro USD dropped right here and gold gold dropped as well. And they for this period of time right here, they had a they had a positive correlation. Even back in here, they had a pretty positive correlation. Even for a while, look, they they had a pretty positive correlation. But then take chunks of time like this, like what happened right here when gold rallied between middle of March and middle of April. In Euro USD, we stayed in consolidation. What happened right now while Euro USD is in a bunch of consolidation and gold is rallying? Okay, gold and Euro D, uh, I've been talking so much on this. Gold and Euro USD tend to have a positive correlation, but not always. Okay, so that is that. Now, um, and that's that's it for primarily for today's webinar. Now, if you guys will, if you guys can be patient with me, I would love to read now this is this is going on a different uh a different uh you know going off topic for a second because that we're talking about going back to mindset for a moment but i would love to share with you guys just uh the preface let me just see if i can find it i'm sorry the introduction it's not even a preface it's an introduction to the book, if you're just hopping on, it's a book that I that I that I pushed in the very beginning, or I guess promoted. Uh, it's called *The Mastery of Self* by Don Miguel Ruiz Jr. It's only like 164 or something like that. Yeah, like literally 160 pages. It's an easy read. You can read it in a couple days. Um, I've been kind of going. I've been had had so much going on. I'm only about three quarters of the way through. Um, but 
I just want to read this to you guys for those of you guys that have a little bit of patience, okay? So here's the introduction. It'll literally take me like two minutes to read. Not even joking. It's a page and a half, and it's a small, small page. Okay, here we go. It says, imagine for a moment that you are in a dream. In this dream, you find yourself at a huge party with thousands of people where you are the only sober person and every, everyone else is drunk. The other party goers are in varying states of intoxication. A few people have just had one or two drinks and, and are only tipsy. Most fall into the realm of general drunkenness and a handful are so drunk that they are making spectacles of themselves in all sorts of colorful ways. They may have even blacked out as their actions seem completely out of their control. Some of the people at this party are your friends and your family. Some are acquaintances, but most you don't know. You try to talk to a few people, but you quickly realize that their intoxication level has altered their ability to communicate clearly. It has clouded their viewpoint. You also notice that each person is experiencing the party differently. Depending on his or her degree of drunkenness and your interactions, oh, and your interact, depending, okay, I'm sorry, let me, the, the page changed. Let me restart that. It says, you also notice that each person is experiencing the party differently depending on his or her degree of drunkenness and your interactions change with every drink they consume. The party goers range from loud, outgoing, and near to shy, quiet, and sullen. As the party rages on, you watch everyone alternate between the two ends of the spectrum, from happy to sad, excited to apathetic. They fight and make up, argue, embrace, and argue again. And as you watch this type of odd behavior repeat itself endlessly in cycles throughout the night, you realize that even though they're drunk, it's not the booze that they crave more of, but rather the drama of the party. As the night continues, your interactions with the party goers vary from person to person. While some are enjoyable, others have the potential to quickly turn volatile. Since their perception is clouded, the other party goers react emotionally, emotionally to situations that you can see are just pure fantasy. For most of them, the dream has become a nightmare. Most important of all, it's clear that no one at this party knows this is all just a dream. Then it occurred to you that this is not a new party, but one you've attended before. At one point, you were just like them. You went through all the varying degrees of drunkness, behaving exactly as those around you are now. You converse through the fog of booze, join the folly of the party, and let the intoxication guide your actions. Finally, it's clear that no one there realizes you are now sober. They think you are still drunk just like them. They do not see your path, only their own. They view you as distortion, projected by their alcohol-addled minds, not as you actually are. They are also completely unaware of the true effect the liquor is having on them. Each is lost in his or her own dream of the party. They do not see how their interactions are no longer under their control. As a result, they continually try to entice you to join the drama of the party, to join the fully that their distorted perception has created. What will you do? And that's, that's, the, uh, that's the introduction to this book called The Mastery of Self by Don Miguel Ruiz Jr. You guys can take that for what you will. Um, I think it has very subliminal, deeper meanings. Um, I think it also has a lot to do with the actual, like what is actually going on and um, you know, so, so take it for what you will, right? Um, I'm, not in a, I'm never in a place of judgment. I accept everybody as themselves. I just think that it's important for you guys to read that. I think uh, the deeper meaning is more important to understand that, you know, most people in life are in this, this drunken state of, of comfort, if you will. And, uh, you know, you have, you have to wake up from that. You have to become quote unquote sober. Now I don't necessarily always mean it in the, in the literal way. I mean it in that mindset way. Okay. So, uh, if that caught your attention, I highly recommend reading this book guys. They go, it's very, it's, it's, it's pretty crazy. You know, it, 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 I read something the other day and I'll leave you guys with this. I read something the other day about books and a book you know, most people don't write books until they're a lot older, right? A lot of the good books, um, 
a lot of people don't write until they're in their late ages. And you can, in, in a book, in a couple hundred pages, you can obtain the knowledge of 50 to 70 years from somebody in one book. That gave me goosebumps when I thought it, when I heard that, because it's so true. It's like you're, you're learning what somebody else, somebody else is like, what the, they're obviously writing a book because they're passionate about something of their life that they've learned through their life that they believe is worth writing, spending the money, publishing a book, going through the, that step process, and you're being able to learn that. So sorry if I'm going a little too wooey and deep for some of you guys. Um, I know not, not everybody is on this, this, this state of consciousness, although I would love for all of you guys to be on this, this exact same state of conscious, consciousness. But um, yeah, it's, it's done, you know, just being in this level and, you know, working on personal health and mindset health and every, every aspect of my life on a day-to-day -day basis and being grateful for everything every single day has led me to this state of just like, it's like, I don't know. You just like, feel like you have like the hack, like the secret to life. And it's, it's beautiful guys. So, um, I would encourage all of you guys to, you know, pick up a book, read an audio book. I think, I think you can read the audio book. This is so small. It's easy to read. Um, it just sitting down. You don't have to have the audio book, but, um, yeah, that's, that's what I've got for you guys today. So, um, I hope you guys got some value today. It looks like all you guys are still on here. So I appreciate you guys, each and every single one of you guys like family, like a brother, like a sister, and I'll see you guys on tomorrow's daily webinar. Take care guys.